Hello everyone and welcome to NetWiz YouTube channel. Judging by the number of my subscribers and the fact that I probably know most of them by name, I don't think there is anyone watching this video who doesn't know what Ping Utility does. It is without a doubt the most widely used tool in networking. But today I would like to try to show a couple of its less widely known uses on Cisco routers, which you may still find very helpful. First, let's have a look at our topology. We've got four routers, R1 through to R4, connected in daisy chain fashion. We don't know much about this network and our task is to document the IP addressing of its links. We also know that R4 has a loopback address of 1004. We start at R1 and need to extract as much info as possible, as quickly as possible. What many people would usually do is jump onto the first router, get the CDP neighbor output, write down the IP addresses and start connecting to them one by one repeating the first step with CDP neighbors. This approach definitely works, but there is an easier way. We can use the traceroute command from R1 to find our way over to R4's loopback interface. Let's run a traceroute and see what information we can extract from it. Good. That gives us a good start, but that doesn't give us the full picture yet. Why? Because when routers send back ICMP and reachable packets to the source, they do so using the nearest interface, or in other words, the interface pointing towards the source of the trace. So we end up with this information. But is there an easier way to get the information about the IP addresses on the interfaces pointing towards the target of our trace? Yes, there is. We can ext we can use extended ping command that opens us to some more options that are not available in simple ping mode. The feature we look at here is record option in IP header. This option allows routers in the path to store their outbound and face IP address in the IP header. So when you receive a reply from the ping, you will have all the routers outbound and faces. Let's see that in action. So to get into interactive ping, I'll just type in ping and press enter. That opens an interactive dialog which will ask us a series of questions about what we want in our ping. Uh, we leave the protocol at the default which is IP, we give it the destination IP address and then repeat count. Uh, we can indicate one because we don't need multiple copies of the same information. We're not doing this ping to establish the connectivity uh, to 1004, we do that to record the route to it. Now datagram size, timeout and seconds, that can all stay at the default. And then finally extended commands, this is where we need to agree. Uh, we are not going to modify the source address or the type of service or set DF bit in this instance or validate reply data or set the data pattern. This is the option we need. It's, it's a multiple choice option. Uh, but we are looking for record one. So I'll press R and press enter. The number of hops in our topology, we only got four routers, so there is no point setting hop count any greater than four. So I'll go for that and confirm our choice. Now we don't want sweep range of sizes at this point, so I'll just press enter. And there we go. We've got information about outbound interfaces back. And if we run trace route once again, we'll see that the addresses that we got from extended ping perfectly complement the addresses we get back from the trace route. So now we end up with a full picture and full IP addressing of all the links in the topology. I hope this has been helpful and thank you very much for viewing. Until next time.